Jesus Christ is risen, and he is our joy tonight. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you all the glory, Lord, and all the honor. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise. Oh, come on, lift your hands, lift your hearts to the Lord. Oh! 
challenge you those watching and those here let's give we want to bless pastor carnegie and then he almost didn't make it there was high winds diverting the planes um, from coming into san diego and so we were praying amen and i said devil you're not going to win god is in control of the yeah. wind hallelujah and so amen he is here and we're so thankful for that and god is going to move and god is going to yeah. bless you church amen so give, amen, Let, let's give our tithes offering, let's give a love offering if you can give tonight for Pastor Marty. Everything that you put as love offering is going to go directly to him, to bless him. We want to honor the man of God, amen, we want him to leave blessed so he'll come back next year saying, man, I need to go back, those people know how to bless, amen. And so that's, that's who we are and that's the heart that God has given this church and we want to continue in that. Amen. Let's just pray. Father, we ask your blessing upon the gift and the giver, Lord. We pray over this revival. God, that your Holy Spirit would move, that people would be healed, that they would be delivered and set free. God, that you would bring joy, 
in place of fear, that you would bring hope, God, instead of despair, that you would bring joy instead of sadness, God. We pray that you would have your way, God, and that your spirit would continue to move long after this revival. God, we wait expectantly on you this evening. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, church. Hallelujah. Thank you for your faithfulness. We want to see Jesus lifted high. A man in a flag across this land. And only to see the truth and know. He's the way to heaven. We want to see Jesus lifted high. A man in a flag across this land. And only to see and no, in the way to heaven. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. Oh, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Aren't you excited, church? Yes. Praise the Lord. And we've been having a Holy Ghost time during uh, fasting and prayer. Many people got healed here in the church, and we would come and pray. This past weekend, we had a great men's discipleship. Several of the men got to preach. One of them, for the first time, they had never given an altar call anything. He got to do a little, uh, little shot, and he says, man, there's a... He says, there's a real rush to preaching, isn't there? And I said, that's called the Holy Ghost, baby. Yeah. And so he was really excited. And then we had a concert. And six people prayed. So this is just out here. Six people came. One, one carload, they stopped. Just as we were doing the altar call, they heard the music and they lifted up their hands. They said the sinner's prayer. We went and ministered to them. They came out to church Sunday morning. All four of those people. And then we had a bunch of visitors Sunday night. God is good, church. God is building his church. You just continue to be faithful. And you should say, God, speak to me tonight. Speak into my life, whatever is needed, because God is going to. Let's just give a warm San Diego welcome as Pastor Marty. Thank you. 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 And good evening to anybody who's watching online. I've gotten used to saying this now over the past year. I told our congregation when I was younger, and my mom and dad, you know, used to listen to the radio preachers and the TV preachers, and they would always preach at the camera. And they say, to all of you out there in TV land, God's going to give you a miracle. And I used to think it was so corny, and now... I'm doing it. All of you watching online, <laughs> God has a miracle for you. Yes, amen. amen. And so, yes, we've all become TV preachers now. God bless you. <laughs> Listen, it's good being here in San Diego. I got off the plane and saw that beautiful blue sky, and the only thing made me happier is when I saw your pastor's big smile. <laughs> it's so good being out here in Southern California and just enjoying. I, I, I told the guy today who was riding around in the, in the lift with me. I said, I said, this is why you guys pay heavy taxes. <laughs> because the weather is just so nice. You know, back on the East Coast, it's the real winter. And you guys call it winter, and it's just so nice. And so I'm enjoying myself. Get to have a few days of beautiful sunshine. And then we have another sun shining, the Son of God. Yes. And so God bless all of you. And thank you all for coming out on a Thursday evening. I know it's coronavirus time and there's so many other things going on and just to see people come out tonight and just want more of God that's a beautiful thing and I pray God bless you for that tonight yeah. all right so let's go right into our scripture for this evening we're going to go to John chapter 4 I need everybody to get your Bible with me because we're going to take our time and read through this Bible text it's the gospel of John chapter number 4 the story is familiar but I'm hoping that God will say something nice and fresh to us tonight that will get us excited and move us a little closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 4, and I'm going to begin my reading at verse number 10. Now, I know that you've read the story of Jesus Christ ministering to a woman at the well. It's one of my favorite scriptures to preach from. Uh, it's one of the scriptures that I plan on writing a book about because I go through all the years of preaching 
And I have like about 10 or 11 different sermons on the same scripture. So I want to get all of those messages and put them together in one little pamphlet. Because it is such a great story. There's so much revelation from God there. And I pray tonight that God would give you this revelation. Now look at the scripture starting at verse number 10. John 4 verse 10. If you're ready, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, everybody. Verse number 10. It says, and Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him or me, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. Isn't that the truth? Come on, I need an amen and say amen tonight. He said, whoever drinks from this water, anything that you're looking for out in the world to satisfy you, you might feel temporarily satisfied. He said, but you will thirst again. And then he goes on to say, but whoever, verse 14, drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband for you have had five husbands. And the one whom you now have is not your husband. And that you spoke truly. And the last verse I'm reading is verse 19. The woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Now, would you all help me to pray over our message tonight? Yes. Listen, Anything we do, we give it to God first. Yeah. Come on, I know you guys came out. The pastor, all right, he's coming. Oh, I'm going to come out. But listen, we really come out to hear from God. Yes. Life right. is in such a mess right now that it's only the word of God that can lift us out of the mess that we're in right now. Pray with me. Come on, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, Holy Jesus. Spirit, we're giving you the service right now. God, that you we pray, Father, a flame from heaven to draw down right now in this assembly. God, a special touch on every man and woman in the building tonight. God, every demon from hell, every struggle, every bondage, every roadblock that is hindering your people, every source of frustration in their mind would be relieved right now. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Father, we pray that somebody would have their prayer answered tonight. Yes. That somebody would have the breakthrough that they're waiting for tonight. Let your word minister as only you can. And by faith we receive it right now. In Jesus' name. Everybody shout amen. amen. Now my entire message for you tonight comes from a story I was reading in Atlanta. It's a story of a man in the paper. His name was Danny Segua. Now, I'm not sure what kind of name Segua was. They didn't have a picture of him, but his story really got my attention because Danny Segua was fixing his car in his garage. And as he was fixing his car, he heard two people fighting across the street from where he lives. And so he comes out of the garage to hear these two people fighting. And while they're fighting, he literally witnesses a murder. Now imagine that. 
So he comes out of his garage, minding his own business. He's in there fixing his car. He hears the commotion. He comes out, and across the street, two men were fighting, and he watched one man stab the other man to death and leave him lying in front of the house on the sidewalk. Danny Segura witnessed a murder. Now, what would you have done? So let me tell you what Danny did. He decided, I'm going to have to call the police. So he gets his phone and he calls the police. He said, I don't know if this man is dead, but I just witnessed one man stab another man. And he's lying in the street, gave him the address, the ambulance, the police came. Sure enough, the man had died. He had bled to death right in front of his neighbor's house. And so as he there with the police, they're asking him questions. He's the only witness. And so finally, the man who stabbed the guy was arrested. And right after his trial, of course, he was convicted of murder and sent off to prison. But Danny Segula got a knock on the door. It was the immigration officials. He was living in Georgia illegally, and the lawyer for the man that he had convicted with his testimony was so angry, the family were so upset, they found out he was illegal. They turned him into the immigration people, and they came to his house, arrested him, and deported him to Central America. Well, Danny Segura made his way back to America. <laughs> And his story was in the paper, and this is where my inspiration came from, because I want you to listen to his words. Listen to what he says. He said, I did the right thing, and it turned out wrong. I end up getting deported, losing my house, losing my business, and almost losing my family, he said, now I'm confused, but I know one thing. The next time, I won't be so quick to do the right thing. You know what he's saying? Next time I see somebody get killed, they're going to lie there. <laughs> because I did the right thing, and he says, and it ended up or turned out wrong. Now, folks, you all can feel his frustration because usually they tell us in life that right always comes out right. Isn't that true? Yeah. Come on, our parents tell us, no, you must always do the right thing. You must always tell the truth because right will always turn out right. Well, in his case, and some of you listening to me tonight, you know that right can often turn wrong. And when it does, just like Danny Segura, it can leave people completely confused, especially Christian people. Yeah. Because we are a praying people. Say amen. amen. Come on. We are people who, who pride ourselves in doing God's will and not our will and, and trying to serve others and forgive others and to give to people even when we don't have. We're taught by the gospel to do what is right. Well, what happens when right turns wrong? That's the question I want to answer with you today because I pastor a congregation just like your pastor here in San Diego and my big dilemma is the frustration in many children of God's life because we do pray. We do love our husband and wife and our children. We do serve God faithfully. And it's almost like in our subconscious mind, we're trusting that because we're doing what's right, then things in life are going to unfold right for us. But some of you know it doesn't always turn out right. Amen. And the frustration, if you don't have Jesus helping you, can end up being a great source of pain in a lot of people's life. Matter of fact, some people have lost their faith. 
over this very thing that I'm talking about yeah. here tonight. Yeah. So my prayer is Jesus help us tonight. Yeah. Everybody say Jesus help us. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now listen. In the book of Psalms, chapter 73, one of the very popular Old Testament scriptures you read verse number two and verse number three, Psalms chapter 73. Some of you are familiar with it. The Bible talks about how David, in one of his moments, just like this, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, leads something in the Bible for our help and for our encouragement. Let me read to you what it says. Psalm 73, verse number two and three. Look at it. It says, for I, it says, but as for me, my feet have almost stumbled. As for me, my feet had almost stumbled, for I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Look at verse number 13 and 14, same scripture. It says, surely I cleansed my heart in vain, washed my hands in innocence, for all day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. Now listen to the cry of this man's heart. And you tell me if this isn't the cry of your heart sometimes. He says, you know what? I look at the wicked and I see the wicked people prosper. They don't pray like I pray. <laughs> they don't go to church like I go to church and they don't speak in tongues like I speak in tongues. Amen. They don't forgive people and serve people and give like I do. They don't get up every Sunday and Sunday night and go to service like I do. But look at them prospering. And he said, I became so envious of the wicked. Have you ever been envious of the wicked? Don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> You know, your car is always breaking down and your wicked neighbor is driving a brand new luxury Mercedes Benz. You know, everybody in your house is sick, but all the evil people seem to be doing so well and having perfect health. And he says, I became so frustrated. He says that my feet had almost slipped. In other words, my faith was just barely holding on. And he said, I begin to ask myself a question. And the question is found in verse 13. He said, I have cleansed my hands for no reason. I was down here on the altar repenting before God. And it's doing me no good. I've washed my soul and it's doing me no good. I'm reading eight and nine and ten chapters of the Bible all the time, and my life isn't getting any better. Come on, are y'all hearing what I'm saying tonight? Yes, amen. And what he's saying is the same thing that Danny Segura was saying. He's saying, you know, I'm always doing right, but it seems like it's always turning wrong. Mm -hmm. Can you feel the frustration? Come on, church. Yes. Yeah. I've done the right thing. But I don't see any benefits of doing the right thing. <laughs> and so here we are in this scripture tonight. And we're forced to face the question. What do you do when doing right turns wrong? Now I want to pray for you here tonight. And I want to ask God to lift that demon of depression off of this entire congregation. I want it to lift it off yes. of your family yes. because there's too many people whose oh, faith is always holding on to a thread because they've got this secret inner frustration that I'm doing so many good things, but how come I don't see the benefits of it in my life? And people's Christian life just becomes like a cruise control, but God doesn't want you to cruise. God wants you to break through. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Come on. And so today what I want to talk to you about is what do you do when right turns wrong? Now I want you to think about this text with me. Come on. John 4, it's a familiar scripture. Jesus comes and meets this woman at the well. The scripture calls her a Samaritan woman. 
And as Jesus enters the conversation with her, the Bible says that the conversation all of a sudden comes to this one factor in her life. You've had five husbands. Right? Come on. Come on. You all know the scripture. And so they're talking about worship. They're talking about Jerusalem. They're talking about mountains. They're talking about Samaritans. And then Jesus brings it down to this one point that is a major point in her life. Go call your husband. She says, I have no husband. I know you don't. You have had five husbands, and the man you have now is not your husband. Now, when I used to listen to preachers preach from this scripture, probably for the first 10 to 12 years of my Christian life, they called this woman a tramp. Yeah, she's out there at the well at the time when most women never come out. She's a loose woman, you know. She's had all these men in her life. And most of the gospel messages that I've heard, and many of them that you've heard, they always beat up on this woman because she's loose and she's had so many men. And boy, she surely can't pick them. She's had five men in her life. Now she's shacked up with somebody else and she's depressed. And on and on and all these sermons do is they slap her around and beat up on her and make you feel like, ooh, this is a nasty, dirty, filthy woman here. Well, and, and you know, I'm not going to say whether that's true or not, but I'm going to tell you what God spoke to me the other day when I put this sermon together. This woman, look at me, everybody. This woman got married five times. Do you know what that means? She got married five times. If you got a man in your life, and you get married to him, you've done the right thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, Pastor Julio agrees with me. Anybody else in the house? <laughs> yes. I said, if you got a man in your life, or you've got a woman in your life, and you walk down the aisle and get your family together, and you get married, you've done the right thing. Now listen, she could have shacked up five times. Right. Yeah. She could have been in a sleazy hotel and been a fornicator five times. No, she got married five times. I'll tell you what that means. It means she did the right thing. Hey, she basically said, hey, if you want me, put a ring on it. Come on, that's the right thing. All the ladies say amen. Basically, she said, I know, I know I may be looking good, but if you want me, you're going to have to marry me. I don't play that. And she got five men to marry her. Now, here's why I say it's the right thing. Because some women are so loose, you know, they just let men play with them, and men never marry them. Y'all don't want to say amen. I'll say amen. My <laughs> the woman did the right thing five times. Times. Well, five times she got divorced. Yes. What does it mean? It means the right thing turned wrong. Y'all ain't saying nothing with me. Come on. I said the right thing turned wrong. She got married five times. Came down the aisle with great expectation five times. I got me a new man. And then she got another one. I got me another man. And each time she's full of hope and expectation. And each time the marriage ended up in divorce. The right thing turned wrong. Yes, amen. Now you can understand why she's depressed sitting at a well. You can understand why when another man, even though it was Jesus, came to her and said, give me a drink. You can see why she caught such an attitude with him. Because at this point, you know, I'm so sick of men. And the reality is her, her condition is because, listen, I did it right. God said get married. Mom and dad said get married. Culture said get married. I did it not just one time, not just two times, but I did it five times. I did the right thing. And each time, right turned wrong. And as she's sitting in that well with five divorce certificates, 
Long comes a man named Jesus. And he begins to minister to this woman. Now, folks, this is a very clear case. There's nothing confusing about this. There's not even any debate about this. It's painful to talk about it, particularly if you're a child of God. Because our faith, <laughs> come on, folks, our faith is rooted in the fact that God teaches us to do what's right. Amen. The Bible teaches us to do what's right. Our parents, our pastors teach us to do what's right. And it's so hard to talk about it when you do right and it ends up wrong. It's almost like having egg on your face. It's almost like being mocked because you just kept doing the right thing and it turns out wrong. It's like the lady who told me the other day, I've paid my tithes for five straight years and she has. And she gets an eviction notice. Hmm. She's done the right thing for five years. But she ends up behind in her rent and is getting evicted from her house. And she said, well, what do you have to say to that, Pastor? I said, well, I ain't got no money to lend you. <laughs> I said, but I do know this. Wherever you end up, there is going to be a purpose for God. And you don't see it now, but you'll see it later. I said, trust God. How many of you got to trust God? To me? Yeah, yeah. And that's my only advice to her. And exactly as I said, end up happening. She ended up moving into a Section 8 place where she witnessed to everybody and began to bring them to the Lord Jesus Christ. And she's so happy now. She said, getting kicked out of that place was the best thing that ever happened to me. In other words, I've become more fruitful. I've become more happy. Yes, I'm not living in an ideal place, but I'm fruitful in the will of God. Amen. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying today? Amen. So my point to you is what do you do when right turns wrong. We have a story of Job. You all know the story of Job, how that everything seemed to have gone wrong in Job's life. The Bible tells us that his children were killed, his property was destroyed, his businesses and his income and his livestock were ruined. And as everything was going wrong, the Bible says his wife came to him and said, are you still going to keep your integrity before God? You still get up every morning at 5.30 and you pray? After all this devastation, those prayers don't seem to be getting answered. You still going to that church and worshiping God, lifting your hands after all of this death and devastation. And the Bible says that Job said to her, you speak like a foolish woman. Now, here's why I'm telling you the story, because she was just like this guy, Danny Segura. Basically, she had become jaded because they've done the right thing and it's turned out wrong. And when you're a child of God and you're always doing what's right and it turns out wrong, if you don't have a deep relationship with Jesus, the devil can take advantage of your instability. And this is where many good people have failed. It's not because they gave up on the Bible. It's not because they gave up on God. It's because I've put so much into doing right. And now the devil is mocking me and telling me all I've been doing is wasting my time but would you agree with me? You never waste your time when you serve Jesus. Right. Yeah. Come on, everybody. Right. Yeah. A very good couple in our church in England years ago. You know, the young lady got saved and the husband was a serial cheater. And all she would do was come to church and come to prayer meeting and pray. And she'd come home and find condoms in the house and girl's phone numbers on his phone and he's just a serial cheater and she'd go to church and just cry and pray and cry and pray and tell my wife and the others pray with me. She's so discouraged because she just keeps on doing the right thing but it just keeps on being thrown in her face by the devil. God's not hearing you. All that worship, all that praying, all that stuff, nothing is happening. 
But I'm going to tell you what happened. All the time she's doing right, her husband's conviction gets deeper and deeper until three months later he walked into that church on a Sunday morning and gave his life to Jesus. Mm. And today they got three children and they're happily married. I get Christmas cards and birthday cards from them two or three times a year thanking me for holding the line on her when she was about to give up because she realized, hey, you can do the right thing and it can seem like it's turning wrong, but as long as you stay anchored in Jesus, right. everything is going to be all right. That's right. Amen. Come on, everybody say amen. 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 Now this evening, in the text, the Bible says that she has had five husbands. So she's done the right thing five times. And then something changes. Interesting. Five husbands. And then Jesus said, and the one you have now is not your husband. Now there's great powerful revelation in this because five men liked her and she did the right thing. And after five divorces, that depression can set in on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she didn't marry number six. Jesus said, lady, you've broken your own moral code and now you've gone to live with a man who you're not married to. You've never done that. You never did that with any of the first five men. What are you doing? And the reason he said, I must go through Samaria is because he had to come and rescue this woman because she's in greater trouble than just trying to get some water out of a well. Come on, her mind has completely given up on the truth and the goodness of God's word. She's done right five times and now she says, you know what? I ain't gonna do it that way anymore. Come on, you and I both have been there. Yeah. And somebody listening to me, you're there right now. Yeah. And basically what he says is that I gotta go in Samaria. I've got to rescue this woman because she's about to destroy her life because she's finally given up on anchoring herself in the word of God. After five broken hearts and after five men have divorced her, he said, maybe this doing right is not for everybody. I've church folks exactly like that. Yeah. Hey, I haven't seen you for a few months. Well, you know, Pastor, it's just not working out for me. And these aren't bad people. These are people who are just suffering what Danny Sagu is suffering. He said, yeah, hey, the next time I'm going to be so quick to do what's right. Here she is. I've been married five times. Five men have divorced me. Hey, maybe I need to shack up with one and test them out first this time. I'm not going to always do what's right. And it's tragic when God's people reach this point in their life. Yes, it is. But you know what? The Bible ain't working for me. All them prayer meetings ain't working for me. Paying all them tithes is not working for me. I think I'll hold back a couple months. You see, and the devil is laughing because you don't know what to do when right turns wrong. Somebody say, Jesus, help me. Say it. Jesus, help me. The devil is taking this woman for a ride. He's talking to her, and he's turned her in a direction that she normally wouldn't go. So here in this building tonight, and those who are watching us online, here is the dilemma that God wants to break through in your life with right here. Because somebody is on the verge of great trouble. And it always happens so, so quickly. Simply because I've done what's right. And it doesn't seem to be working out for me. Now listen to me closely. Has anybody here ever had God tell you to wait? If you haven't, you don't know God. <laughs> Yes. Come on. God always, no, no, not now. You, you, you've got to wait. Yeah, but what happens? People say, you know, Pastor, but I've been waiting. 
Everybody else is getting theirs. There's people here tonight. God has told you to pray about something. And you say, but pastor, I've been praying. And nothing seems to be changing. God's telling you to do what's right. You say, but people who do right, they always end up on the short end of the stick. How many of you ever had somebody tell you that? People who lie and get ahead. <laughs> people who scam and hustle, they seem to get a breakthrough. People who lie on applications, they seem to get the job. Come on, am I talking to anybody here today? <laughs> and here we are, God's people. We're doing what's right. They say, well, uh, don't call us, we'll call you. <laughs> you fill out the truth on the application, don't nobody call you back. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you feel like, you know, you know what? Hey, man, I might as well lie like everybody else. No, God's people don't lie. Right. See, so when right turns wrong, you got to dig a little bit deeper and you got to find out where Jesus really is in your life. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. When God tells you to forgive and you say, but I've forgiven them five or six times already. They're just going to burn me again because you do what's right and it turns out wrong. And you start saying, you know what? I'm never going to forgive them ever again. You see, that's where this woman is. She's released her. Her strong moral code. She's given up on doing what's right. And she's moved in with a man who she's not married to. And Jesus tells his disciples, I've got to go to Samaria. Because this poor woman is in trouble. Because as soon as you stop trusting God, you're on a very slippery slope. Say amen, everybody. Amen. Well. Hebrew boys in the Bible, you all know. The Bible says Nebuchadnezzar was going to turn up the fire seven times hotter. Yeah. And you can hear the devil. You better bow or you're going to burn. Well, unfortunately for a lot of church folks, they just bow and say, God, forgive me later. They said, we're not bowing. He said, well, watch, we're going to turn the fire up seven times hotter. And he turned the fire on the furnace up seven times hotter. But guess what they did? They still did the right thing. Yes, they did. Amen. Amen. And when you keep doing the right thing, you put yourself on miracle ground. And that's when Jesus that's right. showed up in the fire with them. Right. Because they didn't just say, hey, listen. I'm doing the right thing and it's not turning out right. Come on. They could have been in that fire. Say, hey, we're trusting God. They ended up throwing us in the fire. We did the right thing and it turned out wrong. But to them, it never turns out wrong as long as you're holding on to the hand of Jesus. Yeah. Yes, amen. And Jesus shows up in the fire and rescues them. And the story is a great miracle in the word of God. Joseph kept doing right. Come on, didn't he? When his brothers betrayed him and his friends betrayed him and Potiphar's wife lied on him, there were so many times he could have said, listen, I'm doing the right thing, but it's not working out for me. You know, let me just cut a few corners. Uh, you know what? Hey, Potiphar's not here. Let me sleep with his wife. My brothers have betrayed me. You know, my friends have given up on me. Let me stop praying. But he kept on doing what's right. And didn't Joseph get a breakthrough? Come on, he could have easily said, listen, every time I do right, it turns out wrong. Everybody keeps betraying me, backstabbing me. I'm giving up on God. See, too many people have done that. But what God is wanting you to do is dig a little deeper and find out where is Jesus Christ in your life. Because, folks, when you hold on to Jesus, it always comes out right. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Now, I want to pray with you. Now, this is not a random encounter, folks. That's right. Jesus told his disciples before they ever saw the woman at the well, this is not a random encounter. He said, I'm going to go to Samaria because he wants to hook up with this woman so that he can minister to her. And Jesus knows, oh, listen to me. He knows what you feel when you're doing right and it's not working out right. He knows 
Because Jesus did all things well. Come on, can y'all say amen? Amen. The Bible said he did all things well. Didn't Jesus feed the hungry? Didn't he heal the sick? Come on, didn't he bless the children? Didn't Jesus raise up the dead and open the blinded eyes? Jesus did all things well, but where did he end up? On a cross. And as he's hanging there, they're banging nails in his hand and ripping his beard out and stripping his clothes off. He's done nothing but bless people and help people. And where did it get him? It got him on a cross. Thank you, Jesus. You can even hear Jesus saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken? All I've ever done is what you've asked me to do. And here I am on this bloody cross, suffering all this pain. But as he hung there between heaven and earth, doing God's will, the Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. So we could be sitting in San Diego, praise yeah, God, today. Amen. So that we could be worshiping the Lord Jesus in this building tonight. Here's why I'm telling you that. Jesus understands what you feel because he felt it. Don't feel alone. Don't feel abandoned. Don't feel like nobody understands. I'm doing all of this, especially when people are married. I just keep on serving that rascal. I keep on serving that rascalette, and I just keep on, and nothing seems to be changing, and you just want to, I'm doing the right thing. God wants you to hang in there. Come on, I said Jesus knows exactly where you are and exactly what you're going through. And it's only a matter of time you'll get a breakthrough. All the devil wants you to do is what this woman in the scripture did, is you abandon the word of God and you're going to be on some dangerous, troublesome ground. Now let me finish my message so that we can take a minute to pray. And I want to say to you, number one, listen. The world that we live in is not fair. Keep your eyes on Jesus. The world is not fair. I was sitting with a group of people just two days ago. Very upset because of how the last election went. Because they feel that there's all these inconsistencies in the elections. And, you know, they're good church folks and they're losing their mind and they're angry. And, and I'm saying, listen, the world is not fair. Keep your eyes on heaven. Say amen, somebody. Amen. You know, the occupant in the White House may have changed, but the occupant on the throne of heaven has not changed. Yes, sir. Come on, Jesus still sits on the throne. And all yes. God wants you to do is hang in there with him. Because when it seems like right is going wrong, you got to remember that the all-seeing eyes of God are not blinded. And he is to your family, to your children. And to everybody who knows you, that you understand that everything doesn't have to be going perfect in life for you to maintain an active faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's true, right? God says, number three, that we will reap if we do not faint. Mm -hmm. See, if you don't give up, there is a promise from God for you. Amen. And that promise only comes to those who will stand. Bible says that when David went into the house of God and he began to sing and worship God, he said, then I understood that the wicked do not end well. <laughs> Why am I envying their cars and their houses and their beauty? It doesn't end well with them. I get to go to heaven, but they're going to go to hell. There's no reason for me to envy the wicked Life really isn't fair, but those who are what we call blessed by the devil, they have zero advantage of those of you who are enduring for the Lord Jesus Christ, folks. And I need you all to say amen. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Jesus rescued this woman. And after he rescued this woman, the Bible says she cried out, give me this living water. Some of you are there right now. And if you're not there right now, you're probably going to be there not too long from now. 
You get married, you're going to feel it. If you become a Christian, you're going to feel it. If you ever go into ministry, you're going to feel it. A lot of effort. And it seems like not very much is happening. But here is God's word for you. You hold on to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because as long as Jesus Christ is in your life, it's just a matter of time before God brings a sweeping breakthrough. He always does, and he always will. Say amen, everybody. Amen. Now, I want you all to do something with me tonight, because I want to pray for you. I was talking to our congregation about this very thing. And the amount of people who came for prayer secretly struggling because of all of their efforts. And then that very little is happening and the devil is saying, you're not even serving God right. Then he was telling some people, look at you, God don't really love you. Others, he was telling you, you're wasting your time living for God and giving and obeying the scriptures. And people were just serving God out of habit and out of routine. But they had lost their fire and their love for Jesus. And the reason why they were like that tonight, I want you to bow your head for me just a minute. Come on, everybody. Just bow your head, don't look around. Oh, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. God, I praise you tonight that you are the ever present Savior. I praise you tonight that your scripture gives us a promise that you never leave your people. And especially in times, oh God, when we labor so fervently to do that which is right. The enemy seems to come and mock us and make us feel foolish for giving and serving and sacrificing. But here tonight in this service, would you come and just bless your people and would you lift that demonic that it's not worth our effort, that we're wasting our time, God, would you just lift that and give your people an excitement and a joy in holding on until the end in Jesus Christ's name. Keep your head bowed, everybody, and keep your eye closed. Those of you who are tuning in online with us, would you bow your head with us at home because God's getting ready to show himself. It seems like I'm forsaken, I'm forgotten, and I'm overlooked. Nobody recognizes me. Nobody appreciates me. All I've done is pray for others, and then they've stabbed me in the back. All I've done is give, and people have ripped me off. And it's so depressing when you give so much and get so little. But Jesus is reminding you those are the very seeds that cause breakthrough in the gospel because exactly what God himself went through when he gave his all and he did upon the cross. And it was that cross that brought salvation and breakthrough. God's going to break through in your life for you tonight. I want you to say a prayer with me if you're here and you need the Lord Jesus. If you've never given your heart to Christ or maybe you've been backslidden. Maybe you walked with God at one time but you've turned away. I want to come back with God. My biggest mistake in life is I began to analyze Jesus based upon things happening in my life. I did right. They broke my heart and I stopped trusting God. I gave myself to that person and it all turned wrong and I gave up on God. I invested so much and ended up need to renew and refreshing your relationship with God. It's become so routine. You're just kind of hanging in there. You've been praying out of routine, going to church out of routine, and it's just kind of cruising through life. But the intensity, the fire, the faith has long died because every time you look, you see everything that you've put in. And you see very little coming back to you. And the devil's saying, just quit. And if he's not saying quit, he's saying, just chill out. The devil is alive. How they help your people tonight. Come on, if you want that prayer, can I say a prayer for you right now? Come on, if you're not saved and you know you want forgiveness, 
you want Jesus in your life or you've been back rededicate your life. Let me say a prayer for you. Slip up your hands so I can pray for you. Is there anyone at all? Just slip up your hand and wave it at me. Say, Pastor, pray for me. Anybody online, you can pray in just a minute. I'm going to pray with you, but if there's anybody in this building, you say, Pastor, I'm not right with God, but I want to come and get right with God. Raise your hand. If you've been backslidden from the Lord, see, remember, you can be backslidden and still be in church. Your heart is not where it was. Come on. Remember how one reason you're not going to church right now is because you got frustrated. Because you did try. You did go to church Sunday after Sunday. You did give week after week. You did pray week after week. But someone still hurt you. Someone still ripped you off. Somebody still burned you. And the devil told you God is not there. God is not with you. And people have just quit and gave up. And you find yourself sitting looking at this online tonight. And all Jesus is saying, I came to that well for that woman. It's amazing. Of all the people in Israel, he said, I got to make a one trip for one woman. And maybe this online broadcast is for one person, and that's you tonight. And he's coming right to where you are. And he wants you to know he loves you. Come on, he wants you to know that what they did to you is not the end. The tears that you've cried is not the end. He's still here. Let me say a prayer with you. I want you to bow your head. If you're online, wherever you are, I just want you to close your eyes. And I want you to say this prayer. Say, Jesus, I'm so sorry that I gave up on you. Say, Lord, I need your forgiveness. I open my heart to you tonight. And I ask you to come and live in me. Forgive my weakness, my failures, and my life. Maybe somebody from the church gave you a link to the service or maybe God just led you here maybe you just found it and you're watching tonight he's going to tell you exactly how you can you know either through email or text or whatever you can send a message say hey I prayed with brother Carnegie on that night and I just want to know more about God so that they can get in touch with you and you can come and join us we're going to be here tonight again tomorrow right through until Sunday he'll give you all the information but what I want to do right now church is I want you to stand to your feet with me for just a moment Come on, I want everybody to get up on your feet. Come on. Everybody get up on your feet. And here's what I want you all to do. Anybody in here, I don't care if it's just the smallest little bit. You understand when I talked about that guy, Danny Sakura. Mm -hmm. He's an to do what's right the next time. You ever had anybody who is like a friend or a family or even a church member do something wrong or hurt you and say evil words? And you say, you know what? Well, I'm just never going to talk to them again. Well, good luck being a child of God like that. <laughs> but that's exactly what the devil does. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to stay away from them. I'm just going to have it. Amen. You can't stop worshiping just because you're not sensing a breakthrough got to be able to say, God, you got to anchor me in the Lord Jesus Christ. I've got to grow in my relationship with God and let this year be the year that you grow past. So I want to say a prayer with you. And if you're in the building tonight and you say, Pastor, would you pray with me tonight? I want to pray something off of you and I want to pray something else on to you. So I want to open up the altar for a minute so that I can just come and lay hands on you. And I want you to come out of your seat and I want you to come and stand right up here in the front so that I can say a prayer for you and say, Pastor, I'm listening to what you're talking about. I've had a lot of situations where my right has turned wrong. Come on. Come on, stand right up here. Come on. Some of you, you're going through it right now. I had it happen to me where the Lord told me to go and apologize to somebody and I have to, you know, I don't, I know I'm a little bit biased, but even though I went wrong, <laughs> and I humbly went and said, listen, I just want you to know, and you know what they did, man? They took that apology and turned it around and threw it in my face and made me feel this big. And as I was getting in my car going home, the first thing I said is, I'll never do that. I want to pray for you. Come on, I'm going to come right down the line and pray for you because God 
sent me here on a mission tonight so that your endurance will be a testimony that, you know what, I don't care what everybody else is doing. I don't even care what people have done to me. The most important priority in my life is that I keep my heart right with God. Amen. Everybody. Amen, yes. So important that you keep your heart right with God. So I want you to do something with me, everybody. Come on, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And then I'm going to come along and say a prayer for you. Those of you who are standing here with us, uh, you can help me to pray in just a moment by stretching your hands toward the altar. But everybody who's come, would you do something for me? Would you just bow your heads and raise your hands like this? And I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Because we're going to go somewhere this year, 2021. And this is one of the things God wants you to overcome. And that is... Because I don't see all of the good things as a result of my husband's prayer and our sacrifice. So why am I going to keep on doing it? I had a guy tell me one time when I was in Jamaica, Pastor, our church is not growing. Why should I keep on coming? Basically what he's saying is we're praying, we're laboring, we're outreaching. Very little has happened. Why keep on going? Why? Because we're planting seeds for the kingdom of God. That's right. In Jesus' name. Say, Lord, Lord, if I'm hurt, hurt or, afraid, or afraid, keep my eyes on Jesus. Eyes on Jesus. God, God, if my sacrifices, my sacrifices seem, in seem in vain, keep my eyes on Jesus. Keep my eyes on Jesus. If people have hurt me hurt with their words, words, let me keep my eyes on Jesus. Eyes Say, tonight, as this year unfolds, help me to grow past the stagnation that comes to my life when right turns wrong. Help me to stand for you in Jesus Christ's name. I say amen. Now let me just take a few moments to pray, would you folks? I want you all to sing a song for me, for you. What can you sing for me?
because through so many things they've endured. Yes. I mean, through so much, and I don't know anything about you, but I just know that God says yes. to tell you that he's pleased so that you don't feel somehow that the things that seem to be around you and the multitude of heavy burdens that you carry, as if somehow, you know, God, I wish I could be better, I wish I could be stronger, I wish I could be more. God said, I'm very pleased. And he's happy with the fact that you could have given up a whole lot of times. He even told me that you could have run away a few times. He said, but you wouldn't. And it's not because you were so strong, he said, but it's because you loved him. And that's why he's pleased. He want me to pray a prayer over you, a prayer of supernatural grace. I can, I, it's like I see a bucket over your life and pulling out so many things and I can see the tears as it all running out and I can see God turning it up right and beginning to fill it again. It's not over. Raise your hands. It's like this. Oh, thank you. What I'm going to pray is I'm going to pray the blessing and the double portion of God's yeah. favor. Hallelujah. What you thought was gone oh, forever, God what you thought oh, would never oh, come, God says, I'm bringing it back again. What you thought, say, you know what, God, is too late. God said, it's not speaks. He understands, folks, because he's called a Savior because everything that we can experience, he's experienced. Well, tomorrow evening, listen, last year, the year 2020, very chaotic in America. And because of all the chaos, the Christian church has taken a very serious hit. Yeah. Yeah. And most of us in our fellowship, we didn't feel a lot of it, but even though we did feel some of it, because you know we have been taught to be faithful from the time we got saved, but a lot of Christian churches took a hit because of what happened with racism and coronavirus and the economy. And I want to talk to you a little bit about recovery from some of that. And I want you all to tell people to tune into the service tomorrow. Invite a family member, invite a friend to come out to the service tomorrow. Because what God's going to do is I'm going to address some of that stuff head on and put a lot of things that's happening in the world into perspective. Yes. So that you can have hope going forward. Listen to me. This is not a bad news prophecy. But storms are coming to America. Yep. That's God right. said it to me. That's right. And that's not a bad news prophecy because like I said, God is you know, we have a new president, new administration, and people have almost made politicians into saviors. Politicians are not saviors. That's right. No. I read on the news this morning, someone said that Joe Biden is gonna fix all the stuff that Trump broke. No, Joe Biden's gonna break his own stuff. Yeah. Men are not saviors. That's right. Jesus is the savior. That's right. Yes. And so the hope that people have, Jesus is trying to tell people, hope in me. Amen. And people refuse to look to Jesus. Haven't you had enough of men letting you down and women letting you down and politicians and, and business people and, and people around the world letting you down? Men will always fail you. They're nothing but flesh. We have a Savior. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. And he wants us to look to him. There are going to be things that are going to bring our country to its knees and going to force them to look up and admit that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe that we're poised for an unbelievable revival. And because you guys are here in this area of San Diego, you've been sitting here laboring and praying faithfully. You might not feel as if you've seen all you want to see, but people know who you are. Yeah, that's right. People know the witness of this congregation. They know what you stand for. And when things begin to happen, there ain't going to be enough places along the streets for people to park. That's right. We're going to be backing inside of here. Don't feel that way and then start backing off. This is not backing off time. That's right. Come on, this is pressing in time. Yeah. And so I want you all to press in with us, even though we're way on the other side of the country. We pray for your church often. And yeah. I tell the people, you know, when I was coming to, over here to preach for Julio Blanco, tell Pastor Blanco, I said, hi. His wife, yeah, yeah, I never remember he met when she came to Atlanta. Tell him we said hi. You know, and, 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 and you know, they they fall in love with your pastor and his wife. They only came to spend a weekend with us, but there's such a connection. We're on two opposite poles of the United States, different cultures completely, 
but we're ready for God to move. Yes, yes. amen. And I just amen. want you guys to stay ready. This is not the time to back glory. So don't let all the horrible things that have happened and don't feel like all of my labor is in vain. All you're doing is building for a great thing that God's about to do. So don't miss out. It's going to be a good weekend, folks. We'll be here tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday. I look forward to ministering to you. So make sure you come out and invite somebody. Let's have a good time in the morning. Let's give God a hand clap. Pastor, yeah. we'll